Hello. Let's continue talking about determinants. In this video, I will uh, talk about the second part of the properties of determinants. So indeed, uh, we will discuss. <coughs> I'm sorry. We will discuss theorem six point three point five. Okay, part A. If A and B are n by n matrices, then the determinant of A B equals the determinant of A times the determinant of B. Maybe you say, well, we had a similar result. Why do we repeat that? No, it was not exactly the same. If you remember last time, we had determinant of EB equals determinant of E that of B when E is elementary. So this is for elementary case, but this one is for general case. Part B. If A is invertible, then the determinant of A inverse is the determinant of is one over the determinant of A. And part C, we've seen before, the determinant of A transpose equals the determinant of A. Good. Now, let's do the proof Proof of part A. We consider two cases because of some technicality issue in the proof. Case one is if A is invertible and case two is if A is not invertible. Let's look at case one. Suppose that A is invertible, okay? So we're assuming A is invertible. Good. Then by the fundamental theorem of invertible matrices, A can be written as product of some elementary matrices, which here we call them E1, E2, all the way to EK. Now what do we have? Well, let's write AB. Then A was E1 times EK, and then B just we put B there. Let's apply the determinant to both sides. So determinant of AB equals the determinant of E1, E2, EKB. Now, if you apply lemma, uh, this lemma right here, when the left one is elementary, you're allowed to distribute the determinant. Then we get the determinant of E1 times the determinant of the rest. And if we apply this lemma a couple of times, then we end up with determinant of E1, the determinant of E2 dot 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 EK and then the determinant of B. Good. Now what? Now let's just look at this part. Okay, as a separate discussion right here, if A equals product of some elementary, then let's apply that. We get the determinant of A equals the determinant of E1, EK. Now let's apply lemma 6.3.3 again. So I forgot to write right here. If you apply the lemma, then since this guy is elementary, I can distribute the determinant. So I get determinant of E1 times determinant of the rest. E, K, and then if you apply the lemma, I put a question mark, you get determinant of E1, determinant of E, K. Good. So this red part is indeed nothing just determinant of A. And then don't forget to write determinant of B. That's it. We showed that of AB is that of A times that of B. And it's good to say if I call this a star, I'm using a star right here. Good. Okay. Now let's discuss 
the second case, suppose that A is not invertible. Good. So if A is not invertible, then AB is not invertible either. Why? Let's look at this. Assume, let's assume AB is invertible, opposite to the claim right here. Let's see what happens if AB is invertible. Assume AB is invertible. Then AB times some matrix will be I. Good. And that implies, of course, we can move the bracket. But this implies A times some matrix. We found a matrix such that A times that matrix is I. That means A is invertible. But that's not correct because here A is not invertible. What does that mean? It means that if AB is invertible, then A should be invertible. But since A is not invertible, that means AB is not invertible. Basically, I proved the statement right here in this line. Good. Okay. Now what? Now, so A is not invertible. INV dot means invertible. Good. AB is not invertible. Both of these implies the determinant of A is zero, and this one implies the determinant of AB is zero. Why? Who knows? Well, just look at this theorem we had last time. If A is invertible, delta of A is not zero, and the opposite also is true. So it means if someone says A is not invertible, it means delta of A is zero. Good. So from here, we easily see that delta of AB equals delta of A. Oops, not enough space. Let me write it smaller. Delta of AB equals delta of A, delta of B. That's it. We proved it in this case. Okay, good. Now let's prove part B. Part B was the determinant right here. The determinant of A inverse is one over the determinant of A. So if A is invertible, the question says assume A is invertible. So if A is invertible, then A times A inverse is I. Let's apply the determinant, then determinant the determinant of A, A inverse is the determinant of I. Now we can use part A to distribute the determinant. And the determinant of I is 1 because it's diagonal. And that implies the determinant of A inverse is just 1 over the determinant of A. Good. Okay, the proof was simple. Part C, just look at the theorem 7.1.4. We indeed sketched the proof. Okay, great. So I think it's enough for today. Next time we do indeed three examples as an application of properties of the determinant. Okay, stay safe and bye.